So if I had one line that I could share with a Christ-rejecting world right now, and they'd all hear it, it would be prepare for global shock. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We'll share some news headlines, some comments of the day, and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do, you know, every single day, I remind you I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. And I'm not even a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord. And I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable. Grab yourself something to eat and drink. Maybe you want some coffee or tea. Ooh, have some seltzer water and some maple walnut ice cream. Or grab whatever it is that you like to eat and drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. Let's get busy. So, I think the world just is not prepared for the global shock that the rapture of the church, a pre-tribulation rapture, is going to bring to this world. And my goodness, you guys know I think it's soon. I've said it. I think it's very, very soon. Do you think it's in 2023? Yeah, I do. I do. I'm not going to tie God's hands and guarantee it. But all the signs are in play and they're ramping up. And the global shock that is going to happen when millions of people have disappeared. And I think all children throughout the world have disappeared. That is going to cause incredible, incredible shock. And that is going to kick off at some point. I don't know if there's a gap at all. A little gap, no gap, a bigger gap. But that seven-year tribulation is going to begin. And it is going to hit the world so fast and so hard. And my goodness, you don't want to be here for it. You don't. I want to encourage you today with these words. Because these, this is one of my absolute favorite scriptures in all the entire Word of God. And it's John 14, 1 through 6. Okay? Let not your heart be troubled. See, we need to hear this right now. We need to hear scriptures like this right now because we're living through the most troubling times by far that I've ever seen in my 60 years, by far. So we need scripture. The only thing that can really speak to us and calm us down, calms me down every day. And it's the only thing that keeps me in check and not worried is knowing Jesus is in control. So John 14, one through six. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Best line ever. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There it is. It's Jesus. It's only Jesus. Only Jesus. The master carpenter of the universe has been designing for you a dwelling place for 2,000 years. And if you belong to Jesus, you're about to be face to face with him and you're about to get a new body and you should be so excited. I know these times are rough to live through this. I know you look around the world and say, how much worse can it get? Fires, floods, corrupt, just corruptness, lawlessness. How much worse can it get? You got to keep your eyes on Jesus because he has a perfect plan. And it's coming to fruition very soon, sooner than you think. You cling to Jesus. And the amazing thing is this master carpenter of the universe, Jesus Christ, who has been building us who belong to him dwelling places for 2000 years. He loves you more than I can ever express to you. He loves you. He's looking out for you. He loves you. Who can be against you? if Jesus is for you, right? All right, let's see what's going on in this world because I'm telling you that rapture is coming quick. That seven-year tribulation is speeding at us like a bullet and the rapture is before that seven-year period. 
Amir Sarfati said last night the Israeli Air Force is attacking now in Syria. Once again, I think they attacked the airport last night. Uh, for the first time since April, the Air Force attacked Damascus International Airport. Apparently, these are Iranian arms shipments. I guess the arms shipments came in and they blew them up, sounds like. Um, also, it says Iranian and Yes, Iranian and Hezbollah targets were attacked in the south and southeastern suburbs of Damascus. New Iranian weapon shipment, uh, weapon shipment at the Damascus airport was also one of the targets. And this is from the official Syrian news agency. At 11.05 p.m., the Israeli enemy carried out an attack using guided missiles from the occupied Golan region against targets in Damascus. As a result of the attack, a Syrian soldier was injured and property was damaged. Probably property that meant to harm Israel, I would guess. You know, wouldn't you? I would guess that. Um, so because of that, in response to that, there's a security cabinet meeting that Bibi Netanyahu has called. And it was supposed to happen in early September. And then they changed it to August 27th. And after last night, now it's today. Okay, here it says uh, the security cabinet meeting, which had already been moved up twice from early September to Sunday, August 27th, has been changed. Uh, it was changed earlier today, meaning yesterday, and has now been urgently moved to tomorrow, which is today. And it probably already happened with Israeli time being, I think, seven hours ahead of where I am. So I'm guessing this meeting is probably, they're trying to figure out what to do. There's so many terror attacks going on. Uh, look at this. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this. In Hebron, there was a terror attack. A mother shot dead in front of her daughter, her six-year-old daughter. Uh, she was a preschool teacher. And tensions are building today by Israelis as over 20 terroristic operations have been carried out against Jews in the past 24 hours. The terrorist attacks have really really picked up. So as a result of that, last night, it says, tonight the IDF is bolstering the West Bank with an additional battalion and two companies following the terror attacks near Hebron. Uh, following this deployment, there will be 23 battalions in the West Bank, a sharp increase from the typical 13. Um, what else? According to Channel 13, quoting an official, the Israel... The Israel response to the wave of operations in the West Bank will be very fast, and it may not be in the West Bank only. I think the response will be inside and outside of the West Bank confines of just Judea and Samaria. So once again, you know, we're just, we just keep seeing these things happening in Israel. And I keep telling you there's going to be a war that's going to break out soon. I think it's the Psalm 83 war. Everything is set up for it, and we're just waiting, and, and we just pray for the people on all sides over there, because they're the ones, it's their real life. From Bubba News on Telegram, we'll see what comes of the security meeting on Wednesday, which has been changed to today, Tuesday. But the Israeli attention is turning towards Gaza and Hamas after these 20-plus series of operations in the West Bank in the past 30 hours. The Israeli defense establishment positions Hamas as primarily responsible for this escalation. Hamas is in the crossfire, Gallant said. The options are open for an attack on the Gaza Strip. Uh, Hebrew Channel 13 said the response to the wave of operations in the West Bank is not a conventional military operation, but rather Israel is looking for a point in Hamas or Hezbollah in order to deal a painful blow to them. Um, the uh, Hamas's wireless radio said, we have a message to Benjamin Netanyahu. We are awaiting for you as our weapons are thirsty to meet you, O sons of Zion. We say to the enemy that we are waiting for a mistake from you, which will lead to your demise. You yourselves are the ones who deluded yourself with false security. Uh, dude, I, you know, I don't know if I want to be the one to break this to you, but the hand of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is on that nation. And he's going to win any war that comes up for them. And it's not going to be good for you. Just thought I'd put a little footnote in there for you. This is from Israel Radar. Israeli forces clashing with rioters on the Gaza border. 
and uh, several Palestinians reportedly hurt. Unconfirmed reports say explosive device thrown at IDF chief. Gaza situation is heating up. Hamas has been more active in recent days. There's just a lot going on there right now. There's a lot going on there. And there's still the protesting. I don't know if you know that. Every single night, there's still protesting going on there. From the Jerusalem Post, Israel sees one of the deadliest terrorism years since the Second Intifada. 34 people have been murdered in terrorist attacks in Israel so far this year, making it one of the dead, deadliest years since the Second Intifada. From 7 Israel National News, we've got Netanyahu. We are in the midst of terror offensive encouraged and funded by Iran. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Yoav Gallant uh, held a press conference at the site where the uh, preschool teacher was murdered. It's, it's just incredible to see what's going on. At the same time, from Israel today, Iran unveils its new attack drone with a reported operational range of 2,000 kilometers and a payload of 300 kilos of missiles and bombs. That's a big, big drone. That is a big attack drone they got there. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> we're, we're living through these days and we're seeing everything escalate. And I think what's going to interrupt so much of this, I think... I think a war may start in Israel, and I think that may be around the time of the rapture. I think it could happen any moment. That's why I always tell you, I look up every single day I'm looking up. Every day. Because I really do believe it could happen any time. All right, we got a Hawaii Democrat, Senator Brian Schatz, says the fire, such as the one that destroyed Lahaina in Maui, is the new normal for the whole planet. Really? Hmm. Maybe he reads Bible prophecy. Because the seven years is going to have a lot of fire. Uh, Pakistan, now it's 21 churches have been razed to the ground and a thousand Christians have been affected. A thousand frightened and homeless Christians forced to sleep rough. Number of churches and chapels targeted rises to 21. And the archbishop says Christians are second-class citizens to be terrorized at will. Pray for our brothers and sisters in Pakistan. Amir Sarfati is the one that shared that. 21 churches. Pray for our brothers. They're our brothers and sisters forever. And they're going through really, really hard times. That's why sometimes when people in this country say, like, this got, this got to get way worse before the rapture of the church. It's got to get way worse. Like that's definitely a first world point of view. I think the rapture is very soon. North Korea says it's waiting for the right moment to punish the United States and South Korea. And it warns of an outbreak of thermonuclear war. Isn't that special? They're always threatening. Thre we get more threats of nuclear war these days. It's incredible. This is from Sputnik Lavrov. Bricks can become one of the pillars of the new world order. I bet you it will. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who will head the country's delegation at the upcoming BRICS summit, I believe that starts today, has written an article for South Africa's magazine Ubuntu, in which he gave his thoughts on the prospects for cooperation among the group of five countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and the current geopolitical context and he says it can become one of the pillars of the new world order don't forget that all right this one in case you have thought that everything's going back to normal for you people who think that uh from the daily mail atlanta college brings back covid mask mandates as government doctors in seattle call for face coverings to be compulsory for healthcare workers amid the rise of the new covid variant ba Dot two dot eight six. Calls for COVID face masks to return are ramping up amid increasing virus rates and the rise of a highly mutated new variant. An Atlanta college has become the first since the government declared the pandemic over to mandate masks for students and uh, staff just days after classes began. Normal's not coming back. Jesus is. It even says it on my hat. <laughs> Normal's not coming back, guys. 
The world is done. Most of you know that because most of the people that watch this channel are pretty wide awake when it comes to how much we're in the season of the rapture of the church. This one, this is, you know, clown world. Get ready for this. E.T. phone home. <laughs> a message from aliens is predicted to arrive tomorrow, meaning today, as astronomers await reply to 40-year-old radio signals. I didn't know they did this 40 years ago. Listen to this. Scientists have been preparing, hoping to receive a message from aliens on August 22nd at 10 p.m. Astronomers using Stanford University equipment beamed a message into space 40 years ago, and they think tomorrow is the earliest date they can expect a reply. Professors Masaki Muramoto and Hishashi Hirobashiyashi sent out their original message on August 15th, 1983. They blasted 13 drawings in radio wave form to a star called Altair. Altair is about 16.7 light years away from our planet. The hope was that any intelligent life existing around that star would receive the message and send one back. Well, I just want you to know, they got the message back this morning. This is actually, I'm, I'm kidding right now. This is humor. But the message they got back says, greetings, clown world. <laughs> what y'all up to? <laughs> you were not actually aliens. We're, you're dealing with demonic forces. How do you like us now, clown world? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just incredible. Next, we've got the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany have all called on their citizens to immediately leave Belarus, like right now. And Poland, Lithuania, and Latvia are closing their borders to Belarus. What's about to happen there? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to, maybe we should send a signal to the aliens and 40 years from now, because some people don't think the rapture is for 50 years and we can get some kind of answer about it from them. That's just humor. It's not very funny, but it's humor. Anyway, remember I said yesterday or the day before that they were going to decide this week if Japan was going to release their radioactive water into the ocean. Well, yes, they are. Of course they are. Japan will release water from the stricken Fukushima power plant into the Pacific Ocean uh, Thursday, 12 years after one of the world's worst nuclear disasters. And in response to that, Hong Kong government is to immediately activate import curbs on some Japanese food after Tokyo announced it would release water from the nuclear power plant into the ocean. Remember, though, you can't eat meat. You shouldn't be driving a car. How dare you turn a light bulb on because you're going to ruin the planet. <laughs> but look what the leaders of the countries get to do. They get to burn whatever they want. They get to release nuclear water into the ocean. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> you got you got to stop eating meat. You need to eat bugs. <laughs> Sorry, it's just it's uh, I, I have peace because of Jesus, so I can kind of laugh at this stuff. But it's clown world. C L O triple W O N clown world. <laughs> All right. Oh, and here we go. The next story. 14 American cities to aim to ban meat. They're going to ban dairy and private cars. By what year? 2030, seven years from now. In a move that is just downright daffy, not to mention leaning hard into totalitarianism, 14 American cities are aiming at what is sure to be an elusive target, banning meat and dairy consumption and the use of private automobiles in just seven years. We're not long for this world. You realize that, right? Jesus is coming very soon to rapture the church. Let's get to some comments of the day, shall we? E. Yano. Yes, Brother Tom, I live in Greece. Fires are all over Greece today. Very few people have heard about the rapture. I share, but I am mocked and scoffed at. Well, you know what? You share. Praise God. You're planting seeds. You're planting seeds. And when you're not there one day, maybe those people that mocked and scoffed will say, E. Yano told me about the rapture. Good for you. Uh, Austin Hull. Great message, Tom. We are awake. We are looking up. I have never in my life seen so many Christians awake to what is coming. Hang in there, family. The Lord is coming soon. 
Amen. See, I think I, I, I understand what you're saying. And I think a lot of them are awake. But my goodness, I think a lot of them have no clue we're even in the end days. You know, interesting time to be alive. Buckmeister. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Look up. We're going home any day now. We are so close. So keep praying for each other and all the unsaved. Let's finish strong. Jesus is Lord. I love you all. Praise God. Praise God. Access to the red carpet said, Hello, River family. This morning I was watching my pastor talking about Revelations 20. I have never felt more excited on what the Lord has in his plans for us when we return with Jesus in his thousand year reign. All of the Old Testament and New Testament saints will be there. Can you imagine seeing them in the new millennium era? Every pain and every tear will be wiped away. No more evil to rule over the world. Oh, how exciting. Maranatha. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for that. Celine Wyman. I'm so excited. I'm carrying my Bible highlighters and pens with me everywhere I go. By the time Jesus snatches me very, very soon, I think my entire Bible will be highlighted. Once I committed to reading the Bible and saw how it's the most beautiful love letter ever written. It became the most treasured thing I own. I can't stop thinking of God and everything he has done for me. I love you, Jesus. That's beautiful, Celine. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do uh, one more. Joe Cox. Our pastor said that he felt in his spirit that God is going to shake the earth next month. I got chills through my whole body because I feel September is it. I am scheduled for hip replacement surgery on September 27th. I am thinking I might have a whole new body before that instead. You know, Jill, I'm not going to name a day or an hour. But I am going to say that I am very excited about the next two months. More excited than I have ever been in my entire life. Pastor J.D. Farah got everyone excited on his Sunday prophecy update this past Sunday, because anyone who's watched him knows he never names dates. He never really even gives high watch periods. He always just says, it's in a minute, any minute. <laughs> he, he messes with the word imminent and says like any minute. <laughs> so he's always waiting and he's always looking up and everyone, he's that guy is such a great brother, isn't he? But this past Sunday, he was talking about a Hawaii meeting on, I believe, September 28th. And he said, like, I don't think we're going to be here then. And I can't argue. But, but I will, I will also say this. We can't tie God's hands. We, we have to understand that Jesus has an appointed time. He's coming back and he will come back in that time. So we can be so excited. And so many of us think it's in the next couple months. So many of us think that. But you know what? If if we're still here after that, like nothing's changed. The signs aren't going to get better. Do you think the world's just going to go back to normal? We're going to say, oh man, it wasn't this September, October. So all right, forget it. We'll look in another year or two. No, the signs are ramping up. The birth pains are getting more frequent and more intense. So if Jesus tarries and it's not in the next couple months, it's soon. How long can this world go on? It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable the way it is right now. That's what I got to say about that. But yeah, I'm very, very excited. I just think everything is lined up. It's all there. I just feel like we're just waiting to see Jesus face to face. What a beautiful, beautiful day that's going to be. But if you don't know Jesus... You're heading, you're heading into the worst period since men were created. The worst period to be alive is going to be the seven-year tribulation. So many won't even make it out of it. They'll, they'll be killed during it. You're either going to be killed by the war or the famine. Or you're going to be beheaded. If you come to Jesus after the rapture, you'll be beheaded for your faith. That's why I'm trying to beg you to come now when it's easy during the age of grace the age of grace is closing that window is closing 2,000 years ago when Jesus was crucified and resurrected and ascended to heaven the clock started ticking 
It was the 2,000 year church age. That's why when people tell you, oh, they've been saying Jesus is coming for 2,000 years. Exactly, exactly they have. Do you realize it's the end of the 2,000 years now? So you know what that means? Jesus is coming. It's his appointed time very soon. It's been 2,000 years. But look, it hurts my heart to think of the people who are going to be left behind. It literally hurts my heart. So I'm going to explain the gospel to you, the good news, and then I leave it up to you. Because then it's your decision whether to say, I need that or I don't need that. And it's by far the heaviest, most intense decision you have to make in your entire life. But some of you will fluff it off. Oh, I'm turning this off. This is stupid. Or I don't, I don't need this. This is nuts. I just don't need it. Sorry, there's a car parking right in front of me. Some of you are going to say that, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Jesus came to this earth. He left a throne in heaven and he came here for one reason and one reason alone to die for your sins because he loves you. So the same God, Jesus, who spoke and nothing became everything is the one who left heaven to come here because God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to die for sins, to pay for sins. And Jesus knew he was going to shed blood and Jesus knew it wasn't going to be easy. And Jesus did it because he loves you. So, so you say, well, why, why did he have to shed blood? Because we're all sinners. We're all sinners. And our sins can't, we can't face a perfect God in eternity. He doesn't want to spend eternity if our sins are showing. He doesn't, he doesn't want to do that. They have to be taken care of. And that's what Jesus did. When he was put on the cross, all of our sins were placed on him. And this is after he was brutalized. He was brutalized. He was marred beyond recognition. Then they put him on the cross. And he was brutalized. And it was all to shed blood that is so powerful that when you have faith in the blood that it'll forgive your sins, it washes you white as snow. It removes all of your sins, past, present, and future, forever. And then Jesus went to the cross. And as he was dying, his last words were, it is finished because the debt had been paid in full. Jesus paid for the debt. And then he was buried and on the third day he rose again and he's coming back and he's coming back soon. And the gospel is the good news. That's what that word means. The good news that he's coming back. It's incredible. In 1 Corinthians 15, three and four, for I delivered to you first of all that which I also received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that's the gospel that's the good news your sins your sins have been paid for but if you don't want to believe in that and you just say i don't need that then you won't get that forgiveness see you have a choice now we all have to choose with our free will we either choose to say oh jesus yes i'm a sinner i need forgiveness i don't want to face you on judgment day with my sins unforgiven. So please forgive my sins. I believe in the power of your blood that you shed. And I believe that you lived a perfect life because you were fully God and fully man occupying the same body. And you went to the cross and you died and you were buried and you rose again the third day. I believe that you are the savior of the world and I need you as my savior. So I'm gonna repent. You know what that means? That means you're facing one direction your whole life and you're living for yourself. And all of a sudden you have a change of mind. You have a complete, you go from to, from this living for myself to now I believe in Jesus. And he, he purchased me with his blood. He bought the whole field to get the treasure out of it. He calls us treasure. I'm believing in you and your finished work and your atoning blood. And when you do that, God puts his Holy Spirit in you. It's a deposit. And he seals you until the day of redemption. You're born again. He'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. 
It's incredible. You're rapture ready and we're about to be raptured. That's what I got for you today. Today, today is the day of salvation. But I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to pray for every person that watches this. I feel like this was an important video to do because the last 10 minutes since I started the gospel has been very difficult. <laughs> and I've known from past videos that when it's very difficult, meaning like a car pulled right in front of my car and parked and then she went off to walk and it's not really a parking space and the sun is shining from her windshield directly into my eyeballs <laughs> and it's very uncomfortable. And then she was opening doors and the lights were just, you know, I, I almost had a seizure. <laughs> but anyway, I've found in my path from doing all these videos, whenever there's days like this, that are very, very difficult because people are walking around the car or somebody parks or some kind of light or whatever it is. Those are the videos that usually people say, someone came to the Lord. So I just kept going because I'm like, Lord, I'm your vessel. I don't want to do this by myself. You know, you're in charge of this. So I'm hoping this speaks to somebody, but today is the day of salvation. That rapture is happening soon. Don't put off a decision to trust in what Jesus did for you. Don't put off a decision to have yourself washed white as snow, have all of your sins removed because of what he did. We can't brag about it. He did the whole thing. It's grace, an unearned gift from God through faith. That's what salvation is. It's an unearned gift that we get. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve what Jesus did for us, but it's grace through faith, through believing in what he did and his atoning blood and he saves us. Praise be to Jesus. All praise be to Jesus forever, our King and our Lord. Now I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to pray for every person who watches this video. And if we're not raptured today, and I think today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you.